Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, I'm going to try my luck at making a drop scone, which I don't think I've ever done before. I've always padded them out or rolled them out, whatever, and cut them into with a biscuit cutter. These you just drop onto the uh, cookie sheet before you bake them. And I'm, what I'm making is a rhubarb drop scone. I've got the ingredients laid out there. I think I have everything out. Two and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour. Quarter of a cup of sugar. One tablespoon of baking powder. And one teaspoon of baking soda. They're both in that. A stick and a half, if your butter comes in, in sticks, or six ounces of butter, unsalted butter, chilled and cubed. One cup of chopped rhubarb. It is my own rhubarb, but it is not the plants that I'm growing from seed. If I get anything out of those this year, it will be later in the summer. Uh, I have two other places on the property here where rhubarb has been growing for 35 or 40 years should be dug up and divided and some good compost put under it because it's now quite small but it will do and three quarters of a cup of buttermilk I'll get the stand mixer out and we'll see if we can get these put together well, first I'm going to combine the flour with the sugar better get it all I guess baking powder and the baking soda. I'll add the cubed butter bit at a time here. Get the flower storm going. that going for a minute or two until the pieces of butter are down into a smaller size there. Well, I think that's long enough. Add the rhubarb. And the buttermilk. And just keep it going until it combines, that's all. You don't want to mix it too long or it will be tough. And I think that will do. Now I'll see if I can't get it out onto a cookie sheet. Now the recipe said you could do this with spoons or an ice cream scoop. I'm attempting to do it with an ice cream scoop. Very cheap ice cream scoop. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I get three across there or not. I'm 
if I said already or not, the oven is preheated to 375 degrees and these bake for 25 to 30 minutes in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven. You don't need to watch me with my scoop machine here, I'll show you what I get when I'm finished. I guess my ice cream scoop must have been the right size. It's supposed to make 12 and that's exactly what I got was 12 scoops. I suspect if they spread and they're all going to be joined together but that's okay too. I'll put them in the oven 375 25 to 30 minutes and I'll be back and show you what the finished product looks like. And do they ever smell good? Look a little different than any scone I ever cooked before because they were not rolled out and cut. But I'm looking forward to trying them, as soon as they cool down enough, I guess. The one's not stuck with some of the other ones there. Oh, get them off the parchment paper, I guess. But anyway, I'll meet you in the dining room soon and we'll try one. I'll have to sit down and give that a try. I couldn't decide if it already had fruit in it. And, um, I don't know if you consider rhubarb or fruit or what that is. Whether I'd want jam with it or not, but I selected a little bit of plum jam to go with it in butter. And I am having a cup of Yorkshire tea. Tailors of Harrogate Yorkshire tea. Sent to me by one of my subscribers. And thank you very much if you're watching. I enjoy it almost daily. It makes a delicious cup of tea. Well, let's give this a little go here see what it's like. They are certainly nice and light. I'll put a little butter on it. Adding butter to butter. It's a very good combination. The pastry is relatively sweet. And then you get the little sour bits of, uh, of rhubarb. I like that very much. Whenever I eat a scone, I'm re always reminded of the best scone that I think I've ever eaten many years ago now in Cumbria in the Lake District of England. I was on a day uh, trip, day organized tour with a little company out of Windermere, I think, called the Mountain Goat Bus Tours. And what we would call a van here, maybe an eight or ten passenger van. Anyway, the particular tour that I chose that day, sometime in the afternoon, we ended up on a sheep farm for tea and scones. And going down the lane to the farm, we had to go really slow so that all the sheep would part out of the way. It was uh, like a, an all creatures great and small video. And as we entered the house, the lady just took the hot scones out of the oven. They were absolutely delicious. And I, last time I checked, I haven't been in Cumbria in a number of years now, quite a while. Uh, but the last time I checked, the Mountain Goat Bus Tour Company was still in business and I can understand why. I taken, I think, two tours with them, two different times that I was there. Always very interesting, and the things that they show you, and of course, small group with the, your driver is also the guide, very knowledgeable, so it's very much enjoyable. Well, I will put the link down below. It's quite a simple recipe, really. And they do turn out quite well. I don't see any reason why if you wanted to you couldn't roll them out and, and cut them with a biscuit cutter. But I thought I would do them the do them the way that the recipe suggested. So we have got drop scones. So thank you very much for watching.